This video is going to cover how to get rid of the dreaded zero torque figure that pops up in Guy's software. So basically what this means is that the user hasn't defined the RPM channel for calculations for the Dyno software to calculate the torque. There are a few channels available which the program can use to calculate the derived torque. So in this example here, I've used uh, a vehicle where I, I've known that I've actually logged what's called the hardware taco, but I've purposely not set up what's called the derived RPM. So that's why at the moment if I go to the analyze screen, and if I notice in here at the moment, I've got where it says derived torque that's zero, and you notice across the bottom of the screen here also it's got zero derived RPM this wording under here is controlled by the option for here show derived RPM if I click show taco RPM you'll notice I get actual taco numbers across the bottom and I get a taco number in the box but I still don't have derived torque that's because I haven't told the software program what channel to use to calculate it so depending on what options a, a dyno has there'll be one or two to four options normally so in this case the quickest way is just right click in this top box here you come down to taco options and you notice here that it's got taco channel for calculations which is derived RPM so if I change it that over to taco hardware and go OK you'll notice that now we've got a derived torque figure I can right click and also go show torque and we'll have a torque curve up here as well so if I now go back to my ramp screen we'll see what it's actually showing in there. So see here now even the existing numbers because that run is basically the last run in the system we're still getting a, a torque figure here on the screen from the, the last run. So alternatively if I go back to the analyze screen again and if I right click go to taco options and I'll change it back over to drive to RPM you'll notice we've now got zero derived torque up here and we don't have a torque curve shown. So if I right click on this actual test ID the test header pops up so we can go to the vehicle tab so this is the one we need to fill in here if I go to 3.9 because it's 3.9 the overall engine to axle ratio on this particular car is 3.9 that's because the diff ratio is 3.9 and we're testing a 1 to 1 in the gearbox so if I go save now you'll notice now up the top here we have a derived torque figure and now we've got a, a, a torque curve as well because we've now told the program to, to use derived torque to calculate it so on this case here I had I had hardware taco and we've now got derived RPM you can depending on the options of the dyno you may see some additional options here if you have ECU data logging you'll see a third option for ECU RPM and if you have OBD2 data logging you'll see a fourth option for OBD2 so by a bare minimum you'll have one of the two so it is handy to as I always fall back leave it on derived RPM and that way if you forget to hook up a tack lead or you get a bad tack signal at least you've got derived RPM as the source to calculate your derived torque so we go back in here now you'll see we've now got our derived torque at the top of the screen so just remember if you, if you see zero torque you have not told the program what channel to use to calculate the derived torque. Thank you.